Langston Hughes is a school we feel meets the needs of all students. We have over 1,000 students at Langston Hughes, yet we are able to create a small community of learners by assigning 115 to 130 students uh, to a team. And the team consists of four core teachers and elective teachers. These teachers are responsible for providing a strong, rigorous curriculum, conferencing with parents and with students. Uh, secondly, as part of our middle school concept, teachers are involved in an interdisciplinary instruction model where teachers across the curriculum are integrating various aspects of the curricula, be it math, science, social studies, or other areas. A third aspect of the middle school concept is flexible block scheduling. This allows teachers additional time to develop lessons, implement lessons, as well as to evaluate the progress of students during that lessons. Under the traditional 47-minute period, this was not possible. Uh, teachers are also involved in implementing varied teaching methodologies. Langston Hughes staff uh, is consistently involved in ongoing staff development. Um, we are implementing a core technology program uh, which brings uh, additional technology into the classroom and integrating that in the curriculum. We're also implementing uh, new assessment tools, performance-based assessment, uh, and also we are uh, focusing on uh, learning styles, how students learn. Uh, Langston Hughes is a school that is on the move. The teaming of teachers, blocking of schedules, and integration of curricula are dominant factors in Hughes' success. In English, uh, at this time, we are working with social studies to produce um, a project. The project is a newspaper, which the students are putting together during the time period of the 1900s to the 19, uh, 1913, in this case. They are going about researching information using all the technology available to us, the CD-ROMs, the uh, internet, laser discs, the um, vi uh, videos that uh, have documentary information on them, and they're gathering information that's going to be put back into a newspaper article. I have uh, helped the students learn how to write the newspaper articles by teaching them about leads and headlines and so on. And in social studies, Ms. Berlin has been working with them on how to do the technical part of research. If you'll pardon the idiom, we are killing two birds with one stone in this project. We're doing a project for social studies and for English, and it becomes then interdisciplinary by being able to work on it together. We're also including art and science in this project. The art classes are working on, of course, the um, uh, idea of the cartooning, political cartooning and illustrations, and science has taken an in-depth study at some of the scientists of the time period. We feel that working as a group, along with the media center and the uh, librarians that we're able to accomplish a lot more in the designated time period. The students are more comfortable with research and they're therefore uh, able to go about on their own to find information on their own. Um, well, the sheets we have to record our data on has um, a number of categories and um, types of groups of people like Caucasian, Asian, and African American. We divide um, the tasks within our, for, within our group with it has four people and I happen to have fashion, writing, and newspapers. And so I um, asked Mrs. Dando, our, our librarian, to help me with um, fashion and she gave me things for the CD-ROM and books I can look up to um, get the information I needed. Let's look at this one poem in response to Executive Order 9066, colon, all Americans of Japanese descent must report to relocation centers. On our team, we try to integrate the English and Social Studies curriculum. Jean Zabotny, the Social Studies teacher, and I have been working together for three years looking for ways that we can merge uh, the subject as much as possible. An English curriculum is, is so much a process curriculum. 
uh, that it works quite well to do many things in connection with writing and vocabulary and so on through the social studies class. And then I can relate to the things that are being taught in social studies through literature quite often. Uh, so we do try to show these connections to the students and we work together all the time. We were able to do this for the last two years because we were blocked back to back. And this year we have uh, the team approach with blocking, which is complicated a little bit because we have different groups together on different days, but we're still able to do this. And we do teach in a, in a block, English and social studies at the same time. Today we were discussing executive orders as a power of the president. And then we took a look at a poem written by a Japanese American about what her real life experience where an executive order affected the rest of her life when she had to go to a camp because of the executive order 9066. We were analyzing the poetry for syntax and the way it was written and what our first interpretation of it was and what emotions it gave us. Raft is an outline to help you with your writing. R-A-F-T stands for Role, Audience, Format, and Topic. I chose to be a blade of grass. My audience were the people of Reston, and I wrote a letter to the editor of the Reston Times on complaining. Dear editor of Reston Times, I am sick and tired of all you people of Reston. Yes, every single one of you. In my life of five years, I've been stepped on at least 30 times a day. At Langston Hughes, one of our primary focuses is our teaming. With the interdisciplinary team, the core teams of science, math, English, social studies, wanted to put together an interdisciplinary trip. We were working in decision making and the issue was conflict with wildlife. So the opportunity came up for us to go to Glade Valley Stream here in Reston to include with us our business school liaison partners, the United States Geological Survey, the, Nash, the Reston Naturalist, and parents who have helped with the trip who put together different sites and served as on-site experts for us. We walked from the school to the site and spent a good deal of the day there visiting different stations. Chris can tell us about what the students did. Okay, on our way over there, we stopped every five minutes to take observations of the terrain, and we, saw, and we made a map out of uh, our trip there. And then when we got there, we split up into nine stations, and each, sta each group went to different stations. And after that, we went and made our signatures on the signature quilt. The children here are using the core technology hardware that we got this year so that they can capture images from different projects and put together a presentation such as a slideshow. Although art as a subject is an elective taught for one nine-week period, its inclusion in the cross-curricular approach ensures a place of importance throughout the year. As far as the seventh grade art program goes, we are on a new system this year, nine weeks only. Uh, for the seventh grade students and, and we are teaching the entire seventh grade. We are also organizing ourselves to, as far as our teachers go, to work with it, the individual teams. We teach the art concepts and we pick up on what they are doing in class and consequently we coordinate uh, and interrelate and it works, it works uh, very well. So what we are doing right now is we are working, we are illustrating, and it will turn into a newspaper. Uh, computerization will be used, history will be used, mathematical concepts, and, and that type of thing. And so, Robin? We're getting um, pictures and graphing them, and in each box we have to figure out what goes there. And then... We shade that with values, cross-hatching, hatching, and stippling, or a pattern that you make of your own. And then you go to a light board and you put another piece of paper on top of your drawing and you shade it over like you're tracing. And then you turn it over and you chalk the back and then we're going to process it into a newspaper. Another nine-week elective is music. We've been learning how to read the music alphabet 
rhythms and using them to play the guitar, which will help us become more musically literate. This year, Miss Owens' goal is that everyone that passes through Music Lab will be able to identify notes and rhythms on a staff, which will lead, and she picked a guitar for us to play because later in life, she will be able, we will be able to just pick up a guitar and buy a music book and just learn how to play the songs by ourselves. Just as the guitar is one tool to create music, the computer is a tool to help understand mathematical concepts. Mrs. Isaac's eighth grade class is um, working on the computers to um, find the y and the y-intercept and the slope of a graph on the computer. It's, the software is called the Green Glob. And what it is is a program that helps you visually see um, how you make the lines and where you're messing up or how you're doing it right and so you get a more graphic idea of where your high points and weaknesses are on the program. Pencil and paper, you can't as well see where your um, mistakes are because you're making the whole thing yourself and on a computer it shows you exactly where it is wrong and you can get the answers um, pretty readily if you need them to help you better understand it. No. No, because you went this way. You didn't go this side. So two negatives make a positive. Positive. So it's Students here at Langston Hughes uh, come into a computer lab very similar to this. We have three computer labs here at the school, and come into the lab in mathematics primarily to do problem solving of various types. We use geometry sketch pad to do quite a bit of. Uh, geometry problem solving. We use spreadsheets to do a pro project similar to the election project that we have. And students usually come into the room about one week each quarter. So they'll be spending four to five days each quarter in a lab situation like this doing problem solving of various types. Uh, Stephanie's going to explain our most recent spreadsheet activity. About one week before the presidential election here, our school held a mock election where all of the students in the school had a chance to vote. When we went into the computer lab to graph our results on Clarisworth, we first made a spreadsheet. We listed each state, which was relative to the homeroom, and then took the counted and recounted ballots and entered the data onto the spreadsheet. We then used Clarisworth again to make graphs such as these. Low-tech methods are also used to help students learn math. Three more crickets and grasshoppers. Could you guys start with a guess? You have to divide this into two piles where there's three more in one pile than the other. Try something. Try it. Separate it. Mrs. Walsh, excuse me, I'm just separate. That's six. Is there three more in this pile than that pile? Is there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So which one is crickets and which is grasshoppers? Um, what we're doing today is that we, ha we have this packet and we have to figure out how many grasshoppers and, and, ink and crickets and ladybugs there are with the facts that the packet gives us. Like for number one, there would be like two, they would say that there's two grasshoppers and then the second fact would be three times as many ladybugs as crickets. So we'd have to figure out how many crickets there are with that information. And then they would tell us that there's six insects in all. So the last kind of insect would have to be the leftover of six. What students are doing, they are given a packet that has a bunch of puzzles that start off fairly simple and actually end up very complex. They're beginning to study equations. So what they have to do is they have to take some written expressions and translate them into math. To, to algebraic expressions. And to do this, they use manipulatives. They use little cubes where you have a certain number of cubes represent ladybugs, represent grasshoppers, represent crickets. So little by little, we start with the concrete. They simply figure out the numbers that go into each pile. And then we translate that to algebra. We let L equal ladybug. To, if there's one more cricket than ladybug, then we actually make the algebraic translation of that. So it's getting them started into equations and going into algebra. 
Science is another area where hands-on opportunities for learning are abundant. Right now in our science class, we're in our chemistry unit. We're studying characteristic properties. A characteristic property is a property that scientists use to identify unknown substances. Some examples are boiling point and density. Right now, we are investigating the melting and freezing points of moth flakes. The reason we chose moth flakes over other substances to find the freezing and melting points was because um, it's easy to monitor the freezing point of moth flakes because they freeze at room temperature. We take like a beaker of water and we have in a test tube, we put moth flakes in it and then when we heat the water, we measure when we measure the point where the moth flakes become clear, which is, means when they melt it. And then we monitor the time every 30 seconds um, what the temperature of the moth flakes is until it is frozen. Everyone has different quantities of moth flakes, so at the end you will see that everyone, that it doesn't matter how much moth flakes you have, it's all, it melts and freezes at the same point. We'll begin monitoring the temperature. Nicole, this is the salt water. How much is it like? 14. 5? No, it's 30. 35. As an overview of the 8th grade science curriculum in the middle school, we do um, four units. We generally start with chemistry, and then we go on and do uh, electricity. Then we do force work and energy, and finally we show them the light at the end of the tunnel by doing a light unit. Most of it is hands-on with a textbook supplement, and the children have a chance to do abstract and critical thinking, as well as high level, practicing other higher level thinking skills as in Bloom's taxonomy. The children generally learn by doing. That's the main purpose of the program. Okay, today what we were doing, we were finding the density of four different liquids. They were glycerin, alcohol, water, and salt water. And what we would do, we would find the mass of the beaker and then pour 10 milliliters of the liquid into the beaker, find the mass of that, and then we would subtract the mass of the beaker from the mass of the liquid and the beaker, and so we, we would have the mass of just the liquid. And then we would divide the mass of the liquid by the volume, which would be 10 milliliters, to find the density. In the tall graduated cylinder, there were some different density liquids in it, and we added different density objects to show that the less dense object would float in the less dense liquids, and the heavier, the denser objects would sink down near the bottom into the more dense liquids. This fall, we have planted red emperor tulip bulbs on the school grounds. We hope to share over the internet observations and other data with students across North America. The tulip bulb, as an indicator of spring, will allow us to monitor the progress of spring throughout the United States. We have completed the first stage of the project, the planting of the tulip bulbs. Next, we will predict when the bulbs will break ground in the spring. We will periodically check the Washington Post's websites for updates and pictures of the tulip bulbs changes throughout the winter. We will exchange data with other partner schools and also who have also registered for this project. Different approaches to teaching and learning are being incorporated into civics and English lessons at Hughes. That's what we've been focusing on. And so today we're going to act those, uh, act out those roles. And we're going to start with our uh, dramatization. All right. This year in civics, eighth grade, we have been we have been studying citizenship and what it means to be an American in America and the government and everything about being an American. Um, this semester we've been learning about the elections and um, how the process works and what a president is. And what we just showed to you in our classroom was a reenactment of every, the everyday life of the president and what we showed you was her having a conference with um, the congressional representatives about a, um, a law that wanted to be passed that they were making up. 
and also she was talking to the vice president about a funeral of the president of Switzerland, and of course, this is the year 2020. So that they know exactly what they're doing. So basically, that's what we're doing here with our cameras. I've only brought two of ours with us today. We generally use three and sometimes four cameras in most of our production work. You may have seen us over at South Lakes High School videotaping the South Lakes High School football games. What our school did was we entered a national contest. Uh, what we did was we made our own political party and we made certain laws for certain issues such as gun control and taxes. Then we made our own 60 second commercial with the help of Jones Communication. We sent it in to CNN and they're going to judge the top 25 for um, in the nation and whoever gets in the top 25 gets a $500 cash reward for our school and we did a pretty good job. And today Jones Communication is here because we thought it was really interesting how they edited and uh, used the video equipment. So they're here and they're going to show the students how to use the video equipment and it's really interesting. And in civics we've been learning about um, the government and the election process and it's important to learn about politics so we can be more active members of our community and um, know more about our government and the decisions that are being made for us in the country. My goal for English for my students this year in grade seven is to let them embrace the idea of ownership for their own assessment, learning to develop instruments in terms of how they can uh, get genuine understanding of how they write and how they learn, so that that's a tool that they will forever have. And we're doing that a lot uh, by embracing Gardner's uh, multiple intelligences, linguistic intelligence, and uh, we started with the autobiogra uh, autobiography unit, uh, assessing work uh, and portfolios. And what we've been working on class is on the computer we've been talking about what our tasks have been and then learning what we're going to need to do to assess them. Like, are we going to assess them on how well we spelled or the grammar we used or are we going to do that on our creativity or anything else we did? And what we think the thing we've been assessing when we were working on was the posters we made about our autobiographies, and we worked in groups together about that. And he had to learn to um, understand everything around him, and so a lot of changes went through his life during this time. Our first rule is to try to solve the problem. Our second rule is to, there's no name calling and there's no fighting. There's no interrupting and you must be honest. Um, Helen, we're going to start with you. Could you tell us what happened? Sometimes a middle school student needs to settle a problem they have with some other student. Rather than resorting to violence, the student can turn to peers for help. Mediation is voluntary and people come here to help solve their problems and there are also mediators their age that can help them get through it. And also, I think that it makes a school a better place because it helps kids from fighting and it makes them better friends say they, they won't be fighting if they were. So. Um, some of the kinds of things we have, like that we have to mediate, are like problems about boyfriends and girlfriends, some people talking about some people's families, um, just like minor physical contact or just like arguments saying that somebody's going to fight somebody. And sometimes we get cases that happen like outside of school that get brought in to school and we notice them. And usually mediation is recommended by like um, guidance counselors, administrators, friends of the students, students themselves, or teachers that happen to notice what's going on like in the hallway or something. You can go through the peer helping program where you get mediation training or there's also in summer school you do um, a mediation training and there's there's like a class after school if you get nominated to be a um, peer mediator then you go through that. Do you agree that you'll f forget about the situation and pretend like it didn't happen? Different kinds of performing groups help students at Hughes develop other talents.
This is an eighth grade elective chorus class, and we're rehearsing the Irish Blessing. And one of the ways we rehearse is by stopping and going over it so we can be better at the song. Okay. I feel that chorus is important in um, this school because a lot of children at this school love to sing, and I'm one of them. And I feel that if you're in um, an activity that you like, you'll achieve in it. And you know, get good grades and set high standards for yourself. At Hughes Middle School, we have four orchestras. Two are symphonic, or advanced, and two are concert, or intermediate. Altogether, we have 55 students. In the future, both orchestras are planning to have concerts, district festivals, and maybe even a trip to Bush Gardens. We practice every other day for an hour and a half, and sometimes we have after-school practices on Wednesdays, where the whole orchestra meets. Step team is where a group of kids um, perform out on stage or somewhere else in competitions and to uh, just make a beat and just try to see if I go. Oh, and the boys step team is different from the girls because the girls do more than the boys and the boys kind of do just a little bit less, so that's it. We all make the same beats, but we use different we use different ways of doing it. We all have the same beat, but we may sometimes the boys may clap when the girls stomp, and sometimes the girl may stomp when the boys clap. But all together, it sounds the same. Students at Hughes also get to develop their creative skills by participating in an interscholastic competition known as Odyssey of the Mind. Spontaneous is the first part of Odyssey of the Mind. You are given a prompt and you have to respond um, creatively and quickly and for each um, response you get one or three points. The play is the second part of Odyssey of the Mind. You'll be given a problem and you have to figure out a creative way to present it in a skitter play. The Tall Tales of John Jivery is about um, animated characters that our team created that, and this shows how Niagara Falls was made. For middle school students, one of the most important factors affecting success is effort which is recognized by the faculty on an ongoing basis. Special students each month, month receive awards for service to the school and community, leadership, uh, academics, uh, citizenship, etc. And we have a student here, Carrie Keefe, who is receiving an award. And Carrie, how do you feel about being Student of the Month? Um, to me, Student of the Month uh, recognizes that students have improved in grades, they've been contributing to their classrooms, and to me it's an honor to be Student of the Month because it shows that teachers recognize the achievement that students have accomplished. The most rewarding part about being a principal at Hughes Middle School is to see the successes the students have. Uh, the, su the successes in the classroom, uh, the performances, and the smiles on their faces when they have attained that level of success and when they come to you and they say Mr. Christian I want to share this with you or they bring a report card or show me a paper or share with me a project as they're coming through the front door in the morning um, and as I stand greeting them each morning through the front doors just to see them come in with such bright smiles uh, ready for for the school day to begin. Middle school students come to school with many different issues that they need to be addressed 
and in a positive way. Many times you're distracted by other issues, but it's important to focus on student achievement and the needs of students because that's why we're here, for students.